Hello and welcome back. I'm Nicole, the Cottage Witch, and in the last couple of weeks I went on a bit of a Great Courses and Classics book binge. Uh, and by a bit I mean a lot. And uh, so I thought I'd just go through some of my favorites of those today. I've It was my um, coping mechanism for an interesting uh, mental health couple of weeks. <laughs> so I just binge read well listened to. I think they were all audiobooks. A lot of books. So, um, in case you don't know, I have the Literary Tarot here, which is based on a bunch of books with 78. And uh, it's got some issues, I am aware. Um, I'm not going to go into all the issues. I'll probably just link the Three Girls One Deck video about it because they already did that and why would I do it again <laughs> when they did that already. Um, but, I've been using it as sort of prompts for what books to read lately. So last month I read Kafka's Metamorphosis, which was fun and weird. There are actually a few of other other short stories of his that I like better, but that was, that's, I mean, it does stick with you. It's a strange one. <laughs> and then I read uh, The Snow Queen, which was not at all what I expected. Um, basically, the Snow Queen is a really unpleasant person who kidnaps that boy and then she rescues the girl goes on a, an adventure to rescue him um and then the lost world that was pretty cool it was i mean could i have done without the racism yeah i could have done without the racism <laughs> there's a fair bit and if either indigenous people or black people aren't keen on reading it i you know couldn't really fault them for that um the actual story is kind of cool. The the racism, though, I mean, good, good God. Um, same with this one. This is A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And I read it because, you know, it's one of those classics that influenced a lot of sci-fi writers who came after him. And it's sort of the same with The Lost World. The racism and the sexism. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> Just get it together. Um, I, uh, Lord. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I had enough of that by the end, and I read Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, which was weird, and I don't think I'm the target audience for it. Um, I may watch the movie, though. I've heard it's better. The Jungle Book was quite good, though. I was surprised. I expected, actually, more racism from that one, given some of the other things Kipling has written, which are just gobsmackingly <laughs> racist. Uh, including, I think, a poem called The White Man's Burden, which is where we get that phrase from. Um, and I'm sure it's not without its issues, but it actually is just mostly a really fun collection of stories about a boy and some animals <coughs> in the jungle. Um, is it, like, culturally authentic? Probably not. Um, I, I have no idea, but I expect not. But it was a fun, fun book to read, and it's, it doesn't take very long. Um, this is from Bisclave, but oh, I can't say that properly. Bisclavery by Marie de France. It's basically a weird little werewolf story. It's a short story. Well, poem. It was a poem in French. And the version I read, the translator tried to make it into a poem in English, which just don't do that. So don't. But the actual story was quite fun. It's a good story. I liked it. Um, Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman is not for me. Like, I liked some of them, but overall, uh, just no thanks. Uh, the Monkey King, however, was very fun. It's like Don Quixote if Loki crashed the party with, like, dragons and monkeys and, uh, all sorts of other animals and Lao Tzu and the Buddha. <laughs> it's, it's wild. It's an adventure. Um, I do recommend that one. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Emily of New Moon was fantastic. I loved that book. I don't know why I've never read it before. Well, I should have read it when I was a kid. I would have enjoyed it. Why didn't I do that? I don't know. But it's great. And I think I'll have to read the next two at some point. Um, that is The Phantom of the Opera, which was also really fun. I wasn't sure what to expect because, you know, everybody's heard of the musical. And the book is actually really fun. It's weird. It's a bit weird. Um, as you might expect, <coughs> from a guy who's a ghost that's maybe not a ghost. 
um, I won't give away the ending, but it's, there's, there's some fun theatrics in it, and, uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one. Uh, what was this one? This was The King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany, which was apparently slightly forgettable, because I've slightly forgotten it. Uh, but a guy marries an elf, spends some time in, in her homeland, then they go to his, the norm, normal world for a while and she's homesick so she leaves and goes back and then he misses her and there's some magic at the end um yeah it's fine blood in the mist was quite good it's uh much stranger it's a fantasy but it's like early days of fantasy english fantasy and it's a bit weird as you might expect from english fantasy um, but it's really kind of intriguing um, I, yeah, I enjoyed that one. Uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius is another one that I was like, yeah, okay. I mean, he's, you know, some of the things he had to say were kind of interesting and some of them made sense and a lot of it was just kind of, yeah, sure, fine. Uh, The Pillow Book. I am not the target audience for The Pillow Book, but if you're like a celebrity gossip, historical fiction sort of person, this is going to be right up your alley. Uh, I am not into neither of those things. <laughs> um, and then I read, just today I finished The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And it was good. It was weird. I knew he wasn't going to be my favorite because I DNF'd, um, what's that play called? The Importance of Being Earnest. And it's a play. It's short. And I DNF'd. <laughs> so he's not my most favorite author, but I read the story because I thought it would be interesting. And it was. It's an interesting story. Still not sure Oscar Wilde is my all-time favorite author. Well, he's not. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, so now I have read 71 of 78 cards. I'm almost at a point where I can actually use this deck because I know what all the stories are. Although some of them I can't really remember, like Black Beauty. Because <laughs> I read that one a million years ago. Um, there are a few more cards I haven't read yet. So, The Magic Mountain is on my TBR, which I will read eventually. And so is Tom Jones and Les Mis. But I want to read Les Mis in French. But my French isn't good enough yet. Like, I could probably get the gist of the story, but I'd miss too much and it would annoy me. So I'm going to hold off on that for a while. But, like, I know the story, so. Uh, and then, so these, these three I will definitely read. Vanity Fair, I'm Undecided because I just, I read the synopsis and go, eh, do I want to? It's not a short book either, so I may start it and see if I finish it. Um, Great Expectations, I am not, I've never been able to get into Dickens, somebody help. Um, so I don't know if I'll read that. And then these are both the other two. There are three Jane Austen cards in this deck, three. There couldn't have been like the Brontes deck. Is there a Bronte one? I can't remember, anyway. I am not a Jane Austen fan. With apologies to all the Jane Austen fans out there. I know there are people who are absolutely bananas about her books. I just can't. I've tried Pride and Prejudice. I read Sense and Sensibility. I read Northanger Abbey, which if there was ever a, a Jane Austen book I was going to like, it would be a gothic satire. And I just can't do it. So the idea of reading two more, one of these is Emma, Emma and one is Persuasion. I think that's the order. Um, I just don't think I can do it. So I might just have to read the synopses on Wikipedia and call it a day for those ones. Um, but Tom Jones and, and The Magic Mountain, I will definitely, definitely read. Um, and then, <coughs> so I'm not going to talk about every Great Courses thing that I listen to. Because that would take a million years. Because um, there were like 8 to 19 of them. Ridiculous. Um, I really, when I say obsessively listen to, I mean obsessively listen to. Um, it was my survival strategy, some days literally. Uh, so, what did I read first? Classic Novels by Arthur Weinstein. That was fantastic. I loved that one. <coughs> Basically, I went through all the English literature, all the, and the Western literature courses that they have on, on um, Audible. And listen to all of the free ones and most of the not free ones. Um, so classic novels was amazing. It was basically one chapter devoted to each 
of a bunch of classic novels. And if any if anything was ever going to convince me to read Faulkner, that would. Um, it might not still, <laughs> but if anything was going to, um, it'd be that. We'll see. If, we'll see if I actually read him or not. Um, and then I listened to the classics of British literature. I'll link these all down below. 20th century American fiction, literary modernism, which was fun. I like modernism. Like I, I like reading modernist novels. They're weird and fun. Um, I don't like a lot of the modernist ideals or politics or frankly people, uh, except for Virginia Woolf. Um, but like everybody else, uh, a lot of them were not, not decent people and their politics were a bit questionable. Some of them were Nazis and you know, um, so, you know, that's gross. Um, but it was interesting to learn about the movement. Uh, masterworks of early 20th century literature. That was fun. James Joyce's Ulysses was fantastic. I loved that one. It's a really good sort of summary of each of the chapters. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed that one. So if you have any interest at all in ever tackling Ulysses, this would be the thing to listen to first, I think. It's great. Uh, I listened to the lives and works of the English Romantic Poets, which was fun. I mean, I do like the Romantic Poets, which seems weird that I like both the Romantics and the Modernists. Like, it's, that seems like a contradiction, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> the uh, classics of Russian literature which was really fun. There are a couple Russian authors like Gogol. I still, I still got to read. Maybe I've got one of his short stories in one of my books kicking around. Maybe. Um, and then A Day's Read, um, which was by various professors and about a bunch of different short stories. And that was really good too. I loved that one. So if you have any interest in short stories, that was fantastic. Um, there were a few of these little Audible and The Great Courses do these little sort of short courses. I don't really know what they're, because they're sort of just called the great courses, but they're not normal great courses. They're only like two or three hours long. So one of them was How Horror Works in Books and Film. That was pretty cool. I enjoyed that one. There was one uh, called Edgar Allan Poe, Master of Horror. His life is depressing. Um, the Brontes, Romantic Passion and Social Justice. And I will read or listen to everything about the Brontes forever. I mean, I've read m multiple biographies about them, so, you know, I will not get tired of, of reading to the, reading them or listening about them or anything like that. That was a very strange sentence. Um, the, the next little one was the world of J.R.R. Tolkien, which was also fun because I am a big Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, American Monsters, that was pretty cool. Um, that was more like the culture that created the monsters in books and, and movies and stuff. Um, great American Short Stories, was this, this was back to the normal great courses, I think, uh, which was also super fun. Loved that one. So I, I then got a book, which I'll show you at the end, of short stories, just so I could read a bunch of them. Because there's some that they've talked about that I hadn't read yet. And The Art of Reading by Timothy Spurgeon. That was pretty cool. It was like reading how an English major would read. And I mean, I took a couple English courses in university, but, uh, is, sorry, I got distracted by this. I assume that's a Midsummer Night's Dream because I'm not sure what else that would be, but it's a strange image, um, for a strange play. Um, anyway, um, where was I? The Art of Reading. Oh yeah. That was pretty fun. Uh, History of world, world Literature. So that actually touches on both the pillow, I think the pillow book, and the Monkey King. Definitely Monkey King, because that's a Chinese classic, which is super fun. Um, and there were some other books from like India and elsewhere. It was not just European, so that was nice. The world actually meant sorta, kinda sorta world, which it doesn't always <laughs> in these sorts of things. Um, classics of American Literature. I think I'm classics of American literature out now. I'm good. I may read Faulkner. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm undecided. I will reread some Toni Morrison for Gothlet November because I haven't done that in a while and it seems like a good idea. And then right now, 
I'm listening to masterpieces of short fiction. Um, speaking of which, I got this book, 50 Great Short Stories. It's just one, it's one of these little Bantam classic books. And I'm only about four stories in, but there are tons of them. So there is a Faulkner story in here. Maybe I'll see if I like that first before I tackle a 500 page book. Um, there's a Virginia Woolf short story in here I've never read before. Chekhov. I do like Chekhov. I've got to read more of his short stories. Um, anybody else interesting? Flannery O'Connor I've never read. So I'll see if I like her short story there too. And Catherine Ann Porter. Ditto. Um, I think I'm up to the other side of the hedge. No. Brooksmith I read so I'm on the jockey now by Carson McCullers. Um, I've only just started that one, so I don't know if I like it, but I liked her, what's her other book? The Heart, it's on my shelf here. The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. I liked that one. Um, Richard Kipling, Shirley, ja oh, I wanted to read The Lottery by Shirley Jackson and The Mask of Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe, which I think would probably both be good, um, Gothland November stories, but I might read all of these before that. Who knows? We'll see how this book goes. I might not read them all in order either, because um, there are some I want to read more than others. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, now that I'm uh, done reading some of these super, super long books, some of them ridiculous, um, The Monkey King is quite long, but it's so fun. Is this one yet to go? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sometimes I look at these and it takes me a minute to figure out what the story is. I have to remind myself. I assume that's the Magic Garden. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess that would be Oedipus. And Macbeth. I assume Macbeth? Some of, a lot of them I just assume. I should actually, I should go through the guidebook at one point, but I did. Half the guidebook is falling out now. It's not a very sturdy book. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I may go through them and just remind me. Like, I think this might be Antigone, but can I remember for sure? No, I cannot. What is this? Is this going to be Walden? It might be Walden. Like, most of them I could guess at. What is this? Oh, Crime and Punishment. This will be Crime and Punishment, I think. So yeah, I should probably... Oh yeah, and the yellow wallpaper I think is in here too. I should reread that story. That'll be good, because I do like that one. I've read it before. Anyway, that was my little ramble about books and things. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.